This is KGW News at 5. And thank you for joining us tonight. First at 5, new coronavirus restrictions start this week. Washington start tonight, while Oregon start on Wednesday. Here's a look at how they will affect you. Indoor dining is shut down in both states. In Oregon, you can only do delivery or takeout. But in Washington, outdoor dining is allowed with no more than five people at a table. Grocery and retail stores are limiting people inside. In Oregon, they're allowed to fill up to 75% capacity. In Washington, it's only 25% capacity. Officials are also asking you to restrict your social gatherings. In Oregon, they want you to keep your gathering to six people with no more than two different households. In Washington, they don't want you to have any indoor gathering with people from outside your household. These businesses are closing in both states, zoos, aquariums, movie theaters, gyms, and museums. In Washington, gyms and fitness centers will close for a month. In Oregon, most close for at least two weeks, and in Multnomah County, that's a month. Local gym owners are concerned about their clients and the future of their business. Since reopening, they invested in safety and sanitizing without financial support from the government. Some owners say permanent closure feels imminent. And that's every single small business owner right now is feeling this way, is, is carrying the weight of they're taking their livelihood away of all their employees. They're taking this, you know, this one element of hope and positivity and human connection away from their communities. And then you've got the financial aspect that's riding on your shoulders that I may never get out of this. We're very close. <laughs> to to having to close down all the time like it's just I want to keep people safe uh, and I'll do what I need to do to do that but it's just like I wish there was some support small fitness studio owners don't think their businesses should have the same restrictions as larger gyms and we should mention you can still play sports and recreate outside with the safety protocols already in place Unlike the first lockdown, personal services like tattoo shops and hair salons can remain open. Vancouver barber Ryan Alexander was happy to hear Washington Governor Jay Inslee's restrictions did not involve barber shops. This is our livelihood. You know, we don't get we don't get revenue from anywhere else but from that chair. And it's like we can't operate at that chair. Like, how do we eat? How do we pay our bills? Business owners fear these new restrictions will last longer than the two to four weeks the governors have said they would. Doctors in Southwest Washington are pleading with people to follow the COVID guidelines because hospitals are in danger of being overwhelmed. Medical professionals are concerned the fast spreading virus is going to accelerate even more during the Thanksgiving holiday. Here's Pat Doris. The doctors represent the majority of the medical community in Southwest Washington, and having them gather like this for a plea is really extraordinary. Of course, these are extraordinary times. The COVID-19 case numbers are uh, exploding. They're, they're rising exponentially. i um, use a, a, a number of adjectives for this, but they're, they're going up in an alarming rate. Just a month ago, Dr. Melnick said on average the county had 42 new cases of COVID each day. Now that average, 121 each day. The number of people in the hospital is on the rise as well. So much that Legacy Salmon Creek cut its elective surgeries by 25% to save supplies and make room for more patients. The chief of staff at Peace Health Southwest Medical Center said there are contingency plans for a COVID surge but he's asking each of us to take precautions so those plans are not needed. And we, the folks in the healthcare system, will be here for you, for your family, and our community. We're committed to providing the best care no matter the circumstances. But this is also where we most urgently need your help and are asking you to be there for us. As the virus spreads, more and more people want tests, which are once again in short supply. Um, you know, in an ideal world, you'd want to test a lot more people than we currently do um, regularly. Um, but we still are hampered by, um, you know, not an infinite supply of testing kits or reagents. Which is why it's important to always protect yourself. Nine months into the pandemic, the doctors worry that we, the public, are feeling pandemic fatigue and will let our guard down and have house parties and gatherings. Dr. Wa Lee from Legacy Salmon Creek Medical Center said 
This is the year to avoid all of that and to tell your kids they are heroes for not celebrating Thanksgiving with their elders and for wearing a mask. This may not be the best holiday season because they can't see their grandparents and have family gatherings and see their cousin. But this is probably going to be the most memorable and meaningful holiday season in their life. This is something that they're going to be sharing with their kids, their grandkids for years to come. Their grandpa, grandma survived this pandemic and contributed, and contributed to its defeat. Pat Doris, KGW News. So hard on so many people right now, but we will get through this. And if you've been shopping the past couple of days, you may have seen empty shelves at the grocery store. The new restrictions have some people stocking up. Tim Gordon takes a look. Empty shelves already. We're seeing a bit of a repeat from earlier this year when panic buying took over and shoppers hoarded some of the essentials. Washington Governor Jay Inslee is calling it out. That is really not necessary and most unhelpful right now. Our supply chain is strong. Uh, buying up everything you can get your hands on really hurts everybody, and it's just no necessity of it right now. At this QFC store, they saw a run on toilet paper and other necessary supplies, and people already shopping for Thanksgiving. Normally, they would have probably waited until a few days before Thanksgiving. I think a lot of people are trying to get it done now and make sure that they have everything they need. We've got plenty of food in the supply chain, but we need people to only buy what they need right now. Everyday Deals has been, uh, we've been operating for about 19 years. Everyday Deals is a locally owned small chain of stores that offers deep discounts on lots of grocery items, starting with produce. Right now, the shelves are bare where TP and cleaning supplies usually are. Owner Jason Morris says so far, it's not as bad as last spring, and there is more on the way. This has been going on eight months now, and I think, I think from the supply chain side of things, We've all, from the business standpoint, have been able to prepare for it and stabilize. But back in May and June, it was difficult to get your hands on toilet paper. One of his store managers says the pandemic has changed shopping habits. It'll go in ways. People will kind of stock up a little bit, and then, uh, and then it'll actually be the reverse. It'll get kind of slow for a little bit because they've stocked up. So far, they are not limiting how much you can purchase, but some other big chains are. Fred Meyer says there is plenty of product in the supply chain as long as customers only purchase what they need. But it also says to ensure all customers have access to what they need, we have proactively and temporarily set purchase limits on certain products to two per customer, including bath tissue, paper towels, disinfecting wipes, and hand soap. That's because, again, in some cases, supply is not keeping up with demand. Another thing some stores are asking us to limit is who comes in to shop. QFC and Fred Meyer, for example, are asking it be just one person per household, if possible, to keep crowds down. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Exciting news in the race to find a COVID vaccine. Biotechnology company Moderna announced its vaccine is more than 94% effective at preventing infection. And it's the second potential breakthrough in a week. Last Monday, Pfizer released preliminary data indicating its candidate is more than 90% effective. Brittany Falkers talked to NBC News science contributor Dr. Joseph Fair, who says both are being considered highly effective. And with the urgency as well as the capability to produce vaccine and enough vaccine and produce it quickly, we're going to need as many companies as we can to have successful vaccines. So you may not really have a choice of which vaccine you have as long as it works. Yeah, and that's a good point there because with two promising vaccines on the horizon, is it going to matter which vaccine you get? Will people have a choice? It's unlikely that you'll have a choice, honestly, based on a few factors. And let me just point out a, a few obvious ones. You know, one of the major announcements for Moderna was that their vaccine does not need ultra cold chain. Now, you know, you think of ultra cold chain and you just think of a big freezer. Well, it's actually a little more complicated than that. Those are really expensive freezers made specifically for vaccines. And you usually only find those in major urban centers. So it would make sense for the Pfizer vaccine, which requires those to go to those major urban centers and be used used in those and the rest of the country, rural America and places where you don't have those kind of facilities readily available, that's where you would want to ship the, the Moderna vaccine as well as the developing world where you don't have electricity ready, readily available. 
Phase three trials for the Moderna vaccine happened around the country and here in Oregon at the Clinical Research Institute of Southern Oregon. For more details on coronavirus vaccine development, stay with us for NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt at 530.